Here's a great way to start a video. Many of the herbs on this list come with caveats. There are a few uh, provisos, a, a couple of quid pro quo. Which is probably part of the reason you don't hear about many of these lesser known herbs as much. Some cause hallucinations, while others are possibly poisonous if taken incorrectly. But we're going to talk about them right now because all of them have really good health benefits when taken correctly, and in some cases could be the best herb for you. So I'm going to start off with a two for one deal. Both bee balm and wild bergamot can be used interchangeably according to experts. I'm doing my own sound effects today. I could probably add some in also, but that's me. Take note, wild bergamot is not the same as regular bergamot. There are two different herbs. Stay tuned later in the video, I'm gonna talk about the other one. Bergamot, bergamot, it's, you know, a preference thing. Bee balm is a great natural food source for bees and birds. And you might also be surprised to know that it's also known as Oswego tea. Why is this surprising? Well, because it was the tea of choice used by American colonists after the Boston Tea Party. They had to drink something once their favorite hot beverage wasn't politically correct anymore. Not only are these two herbs great for the digestive system, but they can also help with altitude sickness. Their antispasmodic properties can also help with things like coughs and menstrual camps. Minstrel camps. I am just saying weird stuff today. Its antispasmodic properties can also help with things like coughs and menstrual cramps. There's even research showing that wild bergamot can help with halitosis and tooth decay. Okay, let me be clear about this right now. There is a possibility if you have too much beetle leaf, you can get mouth cancer. Luckily, there's a bit of a slope when it comes to how you take your beetle leaf. Beetle nut, which is actually a different thing, is the worst. Then comes chewing beetle leaf, which makes sense, chewing mouth cancer. And then last, and thankfully least, is having beetle leaf tea. Ah, tea rolls! Mmm, yeah! And then another one of those really strange dichotomies, when you use it correctly, it actually improves your oral health. Now, historically, people have used beetle leaf for many reasons, but primarily it's been used for digestion. But it's great for a lot of different things, and beetle leaf tea even works as a poultice against cuts, bruises, rashes, and general types of pain. And this includes regular to severe headaches. Sage of the Dividers! Now this particular herb is actually the one that sparked the whole reason for me doing this video. And it was inspired by Miss B. Townsend, who gave me a whole list of different herbs she wanted me to cover, including this one. Don't worry B, I'm gonna cover the other ones really soon. Diviner's sage is actually a hallucinogenic plant, which is regaining popularity, but has actually been used for millennia in places like Mexico by Mazatec shamans for spiritual and healing ceremonies. I have a lot of herbs on this list that have a you know, weird yin and yang dichotomy kind of strange thing going on with them. This is so odd, but sage of the diviners can actually be addictive, but based on its chemistry, can help certain people with drug addiction. And it can even be helpful for things like depression and stress management. Now you're often gonna find that herbs that deal with chronic pain need to be regulated very carefully. If you've seen my video about kratom tea or poppy seed tea, you're gonna know a little bit of what I'm talking about. So while Diviner Sage can help you with lots of different problems, you gotta be careful so you don't run into this list of nasties. Arnica, it's rather one dimensional compared to a lot of the other herbs on this list as it's mainly used as a topical ointment for swelling, bruising, and muscle pain. I actually used Arnica myself for bruising and it worked really well. And the other thing about Arnica is it packs quite the punch. We're talking Ivan Drago, bam, that kind of hard punch. Yeah, so it's usually quite diluted for use. And as such, it isn't normally recommended to be taken as a tea or orally. So sad, so sad. Unless you're really careful with your dosage. Isn't that right? And while it can help with this wonderful list of problems, you also need to be careful about the fact that it's part of the daisy family, which some people are allergic to. You, I don't know, if not, you're okay. At least in this aspect. I say one dimensional and then there's this laundry list of things it can be helpful for. That's it, I'm fired. A 2013 review confirmed that the toothache plant earns its name. This is thanks to Spillenthal and its local anesthetic effect. Should have called this the list of snazzy named plants, because look at the cool names that this thing's also called by. Eyeball plant. And this is one of those rare plants that you can eat the stems, leaves, flower, and even have it in tea pretty much any way you want, and it'll be okay. When you actually have it for toothache pain, experts say recommend that you chew up a leaf, keep the leaf in between your gums and your teeth, it helps soothe the pain, and you're gonna get a numbing effect that happens pretty quick, which is cool. I wanna try it. I wanna try this. I'm gonna do that in another video. 
In addition to this other host of benefits, the toothache plant also helps with mouth problems like ulcers and sores. And as far as side effects are concerned, you need to be careful with it if you have prostate cancer, are pregnant, are using diuretics, or are allergic to the daisy family, just like Arnica, which is also a member of the daisy family. Japan and many Asian countries know the score when it comes to shisho, but it wasn't introduced in the West until around 1850. Shisho tea is most commonly used for its anti-inflammatory and anti-allergy properties. Specifically, it's been used to treat asthma, arthritis, and eczema for centuries. Among its other benefits, it's most prominent for its possible cancer-fighting properties. Also, vegans who have trouble getting omega fatty 3 acids in their diet should take note, as Cisho is rich in the coveted ALA, alpha-linoleic acid. Epazota. Love the name of this one too. Sounds great on the surface, but it can be translated to mean stinky sweat. And it's often called pigweed or skunkweed thanks to its pungent smell. Sounds like a great herb. Thanks, Eric, for telling me this so much. You're wonderful. Stinky herbs. Hey. Well, if you're having a hard time finding something that can get rid of gas, or wind according to the English, this could be the herb for you. Coming from Central America, epizota is also referred to as Mexican tea, and this tea can help all kinds of digestive problems. Moving further down the digestive tract, you'll find the other thing that epizota is well known for, which is getting rid of intestinal worms. Intestinal worms. Yeah. Another sexy benefit there for you. And this is thanks to its high levels of Escaradola. And remember how I said some of the herbs on this list could be poisonous? Well, this is one of them, but only in the case of the oil. It has been known to cause things like vomiting and death. And if you haven't been paying attention, here's that full list of benefits again, so you can see what it's good for. Right there. Fairy wand, surprisingly, was not on my list of top 10 herbs for PMS. Not sure why, maybe I was feeling a little dense that day. But PMS and a variety of different female issues is one of the main reasons that people use fairy wand. Amongst a variety of other fun names, Fairy wand is also called false unicorn. Now this is because it's very similar to true unicorn root, Electris farinosa, which is also used for various women's issues. Well, maybe I should be talking about true unicorn because of overcultivation and loss of habitat, false unicorn is considered an endangered species. Kind of important. You probably already had bergamot in your tea and just didn't know it. <gasps> How is this possible? Well, this is because it's commonly known by another name when combined with black tea. Somewhere around 1828 to 1836, bergamot was added to black tea to help make it taste better. And it became known by the name of the English prime minister who helped made it famous, Earl Grey. And if you haven't heard of Earl Grey tea by some miracle, then you might be surprised to know that bergamot is often also used in Turkish delight. Thanks to its association with these well-known products, the research on bergamot is actually quite rich and abundant, and it's been researched for many of the issues on this list. But what bergamot is most well known for is treating stress, depression, and anxiety. There's even several papers saying how bergamot is good for both good and bad cholesterol levels. And luckily, it's very safe for consumption. The only report saying that it was bad was someone who drank up to about 16 cups of it a day. Yeah, on my best day, I don't think I could reach 16 cups. That's a lot. So I somehow lost the audio for the video on this last section, so I'm going to go old school on this one and have that really bad dubbing like in the old Godzilla movies. Sound good? Let's do it. They ordered you not to speak. Why don't you admit it? Besides what it says on the tin, historically, sneezewort has been used for toothaches because just like the toothache plant, it can cause numbness when chewed. Sneezewort is a close relative to yarrow, and you can feel free to watch my video on that one next. It's also been used as a snuff that's meant to induce sneezing. Who uses sneezing powder these days? Pranksters like the Weasley twins? Actually, historically, sneezewort was used to get rid of various ailments like colds and flus. Plus, the myths of some cultures say you could sneeze out evil spirits. There are a variety of other benefits to sneezewort, but alas, these are mainly anecdotal as current research is limited. And sneezewort is known to be quite poisonous to many animals, so you definitely want to be careful about using sneezewort yourself. Hey, wanna watch that Yarrow Tea video? Now's the time to do it! Please, be kind, take care of each other, and enjoy your time exploring the world of herbs! Hey!